Thank you for joining us. Well, plenty of big issues being looked at recently with a number of summits taking place. On Friday, we had the Daily Telegraph's Bush Summit, the Jobs and Skills Summit coming up. And joining me live is Dougal Saunders, New South Wales Minister for Agriculture. How are you, Minister? Thank you so much for joining us. G'day, Jane. You always talk to you. Well, you attended the fourth annual Bush Summit at Griffith on Friday and uh, you and uh, Murray Watt, Fiona Simpson, uh, spoke about biosecurity. How did it go? Yeah, really well, actually. And it was, it was great timing. On the Monday of, of last week, I hosted the first ever biosecurity conference in Dubbo at Taronga Western Plains Zoo. So topping out the week with another discussion around biosecurity at the Bush Summit was a really good thing to do. Um, I think what we've we've seen is that there not, does need to be collaboration from a state level and back up through the federal level. And um, Murray and I have had some great discussions around how that needs to work. Uh, we've got agreement from other states to be part of a national plan on biosecurity. And New South Wales is definitely leading the way. We've put out an extra $65 million that I announced on Monday for extra work to be prepared. And that's, uh, that's something we need to focus on, being prepared for whatever might happen is key at the moment. Um, so I think New South Wales is really well placed to lead the way and will continue to do so. And talking about a few of the issues at the moment, Australia's first shipment of one million vaccines for foot and mouth disease arrived in Indonesia. How is that situation going there? Look, Indonesia is, I guess, a continuing situation. Uh, those vaccines will help in the fight against foot and mouth in that country. And I think it's, a, it's a, a definitely a good thing for Australia to be doing. Uh, the other things I think that we, we need to keep on doing is, is maintaining the surveillance at a level we're now seeing. And that includes the foot mats and the, the really clear signage at all of the airports, ramping up the, the incoming mail and packages that arrive in Australia, because literally every Sub, uh, every every person and every package that comes into Australia in whatever port it's arriving in is a threat to our biosecurity. So the more every single one of us realises that, the more we can play a role in keeping us all safe. And what about the virole mite situation? I believe 90 beekeepers and their 80,000 hives, they moved to Griffith to help pollinate the state's $500 million almond crop. Yeah, and look, I got to ha have a bit of time with some beekeepers down in Griffith while I was there for the Bush Summit as well. And look, it is a, it's a big program of work to do. It's a very short window, so they're already underway with that pollination work. They're there for about another week, maybe two. Uh, and it's been incredible to see all of the collaboration again around making sure we get that right. There's a very special permit system in place that does need to be applied for to move hives, whether for pollination or for honey. Uh, and literally, there are thousands of thousands of bees doing the work there right now. There's almonds on one side of a, a property and then canola on the other. And then they will start to move back up and do other work. And the guy I was with actually, Bryn Jones, who's a beekeeper from Dubbo, was doing that work. Then he was heading off to do canola and also a whole range of vegetables and then heading north. So beekeepers with those permits will be very busy. There's very strict protocols, as I mentioned, and, and a lot of focus on making sure that we keep the industry what it needs to be and that's safe, secure, but also uh, progressing into the future. Now, Minister, we've got the Jobs and Skills Summit coming up this week and we've also got uh, what needs to be tackled is the housing crisis and talking about Dubbo again, the, the 3D printed homes. Tell us about that. The, uh, the trial, is it underway? Is it going to potentially ease some of the housing crisis? Look, I think 3D printed homes are probably one little aspect of what we can be looking at in the future. Uh, and this is something Dubbo Regional Council is certainly looking at. But we're also looking at really ramping up some of the enabling infrastructure around all of our regional cities and towns. And that's not just Dubbo, but it's right across New South Wales. Where we can, we're looking at crown land as being possible, uh, you know, usable for, for housing, uh, social and affordable housing, a different mix of land uses and, and zoning uh, scenarios for different councils. So, look, everything we can do is now being looked at. We're putting money out on the table as well to help some of those councils do the work they need to do to make some of that a reality. Um, and I think the more we can have on the table, including 3D printed homes, the better off we'll be. Because it won't be one solution like everything. We need a mix of things that'll actually help make sure that we can attract people here uh, and then house them when they get here. And look, one of the things for the, the Job Summit coming up and I did mention this to Murray Watt the other day, is that we need a large focus on agricultural workers 
Um, I'm hoping they are in the top 10 somewhere. They don't seem to be at the moment. But when you look at ag workers, they are a large proportion of what regional communities particularly rely on. And it's everything, everything part of the supply chain that can help make sure that our food and fibre that we rely on stays available and at a cost we can all afford to actually consume. It's very interesting looking ahead at what's happening with the solar farms, the wind farms and the, the jobs. I mean, there's potentially a lot of jobs that we don't even know are going to be created. There's going to have to be that transition for people perhaps working from the coal industry to wind farm. And, and there's, you know, so much to, to look out for. But um, the skills required are certainly diverse, aren't they? I mean, we hear fruit pickers, but we also hear like, you know, there's so much in AI and technology uh, for agriculture, a huge amount of jobs. Absolutely, and that's a good point you make. And the reality is we need both skilled and unskilled workers. And, you know, I talk to a lot of young people around agriculture and the opportunities that there are. So, I mean, really, agriculture, as a lot of people might think of it, is going to change. It already is changing. Artificial intelligence and, and the use of drones and different monitoring systems that will be required to be looked after by somebody. That's a career in agriculture. You know, we're changing what we see agriculture being. And I think there's, a, there's an opportunity for young people now who would never have thought of ag as a career pathway. You don't have to love sheep or cattle to be involved in agriculture. I mean, you might want to, but there are lots of other opportunities using science, technology, IT and computer skills, a range of things that ag will be relying on in the future. And then there's all of the, the other things that we sort of take for granted, like shearers, harvesters of every kind. We need more of them in the country. We're probably about 400,000 workers down on where we were a couple of years ago. So there is a big focus from me and all my colleagues in New South Wales about the federal government helping open up ag visas of different kinds, skilled and unskilled workers. We need more people in the country as soon as we can. How is global demand and how do we compare with what's happening overseas in terms of our workers and how urgently we need workers to come in in terms of the skills and what we're seeing here and overseas? Look, I think that's part of the problem, isn't it, is that there is a, a tight workforce everywhere across the world and, and Australia and New South Wales are just a, a smallish part of that compared to other uh, sort of globalised economies. So we need to be showing why we are a really good opportunity and a good option for people to come back to. You know, people used to look at uh, Australia and New South Wales as fantastic for backpacker holidays and, and ag visas. Things have changed slightly. We need to show again why this country and this state are so attractive. Um, we're looking at rolling out some of those ideas again with the federal government to say, this is what we can offer you. We can incentivise some of that. We need the feds on board as well. And I think we can achieve what we need to achieve and attract more people back. All right. And finally, Minister, Allianz Stadium, $830 million. Uh, are you going to be heading there soon? Are you excited about it? Oh, look, I've got no plans to be there any time particularly soon. But, look, I think that the one thing about that stadium, it's a bit like the stadium in, in, uh, in Perth that's taken over from the WACA. When, when you're building something like this now, it needs to be, again, technologically adept uh, and, and forward-looking. So you can do concerts of all kinds, sporting events of all kinds, have entertainment and, um, you know, the, the food and, and wine that you might want there. You, you need to have a full package of what a a facility like this needs to be and it looks like an incredible venue and I'm sure there'll be plenty of people from right over the state including regional areas that will enjoy that stadium in the future. Dougal Saunders, New South Wales Minister for Agriculture, thank you so much for your time. Lovely, thanks Janie, good to talk to you.